All right, we got some river running in. Boat's doing good so far. Looking good. That'd be easy to get on in the, in the summer. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a totally usable boat. Yeah, all purpose boat. Yep. Well, Glad I went with this size. Maybe we're good sound. <laughs> we're probably gonna have to move soon. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Right. Wanna hit it? damn easy to get lost on the river. <laughs> That's <was> funny. <laughs> Thank you. 
two or three people on that boat walk around all over it and not have to worry about flopping the other person over. Yeah, it's pretty stable. You know, just walking around it. It's real stable. You know, I mean, especially walking across that deck, it's just like a nice hard platform. You sit down, yeah. it's a cushion. Yeah. You know, put your feet on it, you fish right off of it. Yeah. And the front's plenty big for that too. You just don't have the footstep. Right, right. You know. I don't know if I really care to put seats on it, you know, for fishing. I thought, you know, maybe in the back there, mount one of those seat mounts, but I just don't know if you need to. It's in the back for sure. You could on the bow. It's plenty strong. Yeah, I guess you could put one up here if you wanted. It'd be kind of interesting to have a, a seat mount right there that you could just pop the pole out in the seat. Yeah, yeah. You know, can. and then you'd, you'd have a pretty good swing right here. Yeah, you would. Oh, you know, you where you could sit in a seat around. and fish. Right. You know, no sweat. Right. <clears throat> yeah, you'd have plenty of room. That'd, that'd be cool for like going up to Diamond Lake. Right. You know, but I'd probably want to get some like clamp on fishing rod holders. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but definitely. Yeah, you can clamp, clamp fishing rod holder to that. That'd you know, awesome. get an anchor, probably just anchor it off there. Yeah. And, um, like a diamond lake, you just anchor down on both ends usually and make the right. boat stable. And then you're just, you know, fishing and just throwing it out there, loosening your line right. and, and just putting it in the holder and watching the line. Pretty much. You know? So. That's yeah, awesome. All right. So I thought I'd do a quick review after taking it out for a good full day. There's probably some things I've done that I haven't mentioned on video. I put these vents in just to give the engine compartment a little breathing room, a little air. <clears throat> and what I found out is when I stop fast, if I just let off the gas, that the wake behind me catches up and blows water into them, which kind of sucks. I'm thinking I might build a cover to go over them that comes down at least, um, you know, maybe slotted in the sides or something that'll kind of wash the water off instead of going directly in the vent. So after running for a little bit, I looked in the engine compartment. I'm like, oh man, there's water in there. And then I noticed that it was just washing right up on there. Um, but otherwise, needed the vents. That was the best place to put them. Um, new tie downs are better. I couldn't find a good tie down straps, the short ones for boats in town. So I'll look online. Um, windshield did great. You know, the hinge thing worked awesome. Um, I do need to stop so we don't, don't overextend the the uh, hinge, but if you're just careful with it, it's not a big deal at all. And it had plenty of water hitting the windshield, <clears throat> and um, you know, it definitely does the job. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, didn't feel like I ever got hit with water actually, um, and. Um, you know, picked up a couple paddles. Um, this ended up here. I had it stuck down through here and out towards the, the water or the fuel tank. Um, I had to get a five foot. I wanted a five and a half just for some extra length. Ended up using it to push off the bank two or three times today. And um, yeah, everything worked great. I kind of like, like, like it sitting there actually. It's easier access, but I was able to pull it out through through here um, when I needed it. Otherwise, um, you know, I got, got took some extra jackets and stuff and ended up not using them. But I think I'm gonna put a pan in there so that whatever I do put in there doesn't get wet. So you can get water in the bottom of the boat. You can see there's actually water there now. And if I had something sitting in there, it'd be wet. So, um, it's the other paddle I picked up. Figured, eh, kind of nice to have two on board. Um, just in case you get in a hairy spot and need two people using them. But um, fuel gauge is a little bit weird. Um, I put fuel in the tank, put about eight gallons. I, I started out with two or three from a tank, uh, a can I had here, and put about eight gallons in. I wasn't, I was banging on the, the other tank. I think it's air locked on the crossover too because it goes down and has a trap underneath the pump shaft. So I need to like pull the other end off and bleed the air out because um, it just wasn't equalizing. And 
So we're out running and it went down to, I think, two notches, three notches. It was half or less from full. And I'm like, okay, well, apparently some of the fuel went over there. Um, then I checked and it still sounded like this thing was pretty empty. And um, so... Yeah, it still seems pretty empty. So... I don't know, the fuel gauge seemed like it was doing weird things and it went back to completely full later. So I'm like, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe the way I have it angled in there, I guess theoretically it could be hanging up on, on the divider in the tank. Um, you know, like bouncing up and then sticking. Or, I don't know, but it didn't, really didn't look like anything's cr crossed over. And those vent lines are before the check valve, so they're vented to each other. You'd think it would even push the air through, but I don't know. It didn't seem to do that. So I have to work that those details out. And I can always loosen that fuel pump ring and spin it a little bit um, to get it closer to the... Because it's tight inside of there. You have to have it angled just right for the float to move freely. But... Other than that, I got 4.4 hours on it now, so I'm working on that 10. But um, yeah, I did awesome in the in the rapids and just pretty much anywhere we went. I would say in general, the boat's um, a little bit, feels heavy, especially in the back. Like when you're going to doing a turn, it really digs hard. It's, it doesn't skip across the top in a fast turn. Um, it really works it to do a, a, a wide turn. Um, of course you can do the, you know, letting off the gas and doing a quick 180, that's not a problem um, for it at all. But um, I think there's enough weight there. And I, I think, you know, I built everything kind of heavy. It's definitely not the lightest it could be, but it's also a bigger boat than some of the minis. So I think it's great for a family boat. I mean, that windshield thing worked out awesome. Um, just open it up, freely step across, sat over here, put your feet on the swim deck. You could easily fish from there. Plenty of room on the deck for that. Uh, windows worked great. The latch, you know, it wasn't rattling. Everything was tight. Um, I would like to get a windshield wiper because the, the, the water on the windshield was obstructing the view for sure. Uh, so whether it's a manual wiper thing, just to wisp it out of the way when you get douched, um, whatever. But this little thing I made here um, worked out real good. I got to refine it. This is all stainless now. I made this for a stopper. But this, this just comes down, this needs to be lowered probably down to there to where... Um, if this was a solid piece without the hole in it, this, these are just pieces I had that were manufactured for a reason. Um, then I'd probably cut it at about that angle right there, right up to that top corner. And it might work fine the way it is, that way. Otherwise, um, I just, that needs to be lowered probably. And I don't know, I might just try and find another piece that doesn't have the hole in it. Um, I just don't have Trimix right now for my welder. <laughs> I guess I could take it. Yeah, I can take that. So I, I might just take that hole closed and go ahead and and just angle that down, cut that and move it down a little bit. But you know, for the day, it, it worked fine. It did its job and you know, the seal worked great. You know, it, it sits against there, it doesn't rattle. It's nice and tight. You know, I just set it up to where it had to be tight to close. And you know, these things weren't rattling or moving around and you know even going through rapids was, wasn't a problem at all so um yeah it's, it's, it's pretty nice the way it is um and i don't think there's much left to do other than little stuff like this or maybe tying something up i, I can't even remember but for the most part we're done um i gotta figure out what to do on the top of these towers here to cap the holes I'm actually thinking about building out of tubing something that goes from like the center windshield column to the GoPro mount um, for when I put a cover on it. 
so that it has some the cover has something to stretch over. I might even do like a T thing that comes across the top of the windshield, drops in these holes, um, and and you know where, that way it's round tubing across the top, and it has a piece that goes back. You know, just make it out of aluminum where it's lightweight. When you go to store it, just throw it on, put the tarp over it, strap it down, and you got an air gap here. Hopefully moisture won't build up on the inside. So anyway, that's my thought on that. But this decking worked out really nice. Um, it was really comfortable. I mean, just, you know, you can see foot marks and stuff because we were getting off in mud, you know, and getting back on the boat, sandy, muddy beaches. And, um, you know, not a big deal, but just just being able to get on your knees or put your hands down, not be cold, um, you know, slick aluminum was awesome. And this, this is just like a nice, comfortable place to sit. You know, this Eva foam, I like it. I mean, if it, I'm hoping it holds up, you know, for a while and you don't have to change it every year or something, but um, it's real comfortable, so. Definitely don't regret that at all. It kind of kind of makes the top of the boat way more usable and nice. Um, but yeah, everything ran great. Um, I don't really think there's anything major left to do. Um, I have to think pretty hard, you know, even on, in the motor compartment, I think it's pretty well done. And um, I haven't really tested out the bills, but the thing runs, you know, and I figured if it gets that deep, it should pump water. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll just put a couple inches of water in there and test it out. Um, I'm kind of wondering, because it is, it is uh, showing up here in the front, and it is somewhat tilted back right now. Eh, it's not that much water. See if the I don't even think it's deep enough for the bills to hit. But. Yeah, there's no water there. So there's a little water in there, but it, it's not enough to pump. So, um, yeah, it's like we're good. So I'll post some video of running today, and um, uh, you know, other than little stuff like maybe putting a. Um, some bracketry here to hold to strap down a like a a cooler or something you know we're looking at minor stuff from this point on just just making it more customizable or usable so um, very happy I'm glad it's finally over you know as far as the main part of the build and it looks like we're gonna have a year of using it um, you can see up there just got the life jackets and stuff there's pretty good stowage room up in there. So, anyway, that's it.